If you've been anywhere in the last year, you probably know what it's like to be swabbed for an RT-PCR test. But after that little swab has gone swimming through your nose or throat, what happens to it? Welcome to Simplifying RT-PCR. First, a sample is collected from a part of the body where the coronavirus tends to gather, like the nose or throat. The sample is treated with chemicals that get rid of the extra proteins, fats and other substances and leave behind only what we need. And what's this? It's genetic material known as the RNA transcript. This is what we need to examine to test for infection. If a genetic sequence belonging to the virus is found, it means that Corona has entered the building, folks. This is where we hit a problem spot. The PCR process uses DNA, but our sample contains RNA. So how do we fix this? With step 3 or reverse transcription, the conversion of RNA into DNA. Think of it like using a scanner for a school project. We use a single copy of the sample RNA and convert it into a DNA form, like scanning a physical document and editing it on your computer. Before we can go ahead, we need to make some additions to our sample DNA. Scientists add short additional fragments of DNA to the sample called marker labels. Their job is to find and attach to those segments of the sample DNA that actually belong to the virus. These are called target sections. This is like highlighting the important sentences of the project before we make copies of it for our classmates to read. But in this case, we're highlighting the viral sections of DNA instead. Step 5. PCR or polymerase chain reaction. The sample is put in a PCR machine which goes through many replication cycles to make loads of copies of the sample. This makes the DNA easier to analyze. This is like printing out loads of copies of our edited project for the class to go through. As new copies of the viral DNA are built, the marker labels attach to the DNA and release a fluorescent dye, which is measured by the machine's computer and presented in real time on the screen. A certain level of fluorescence tells us the virus is present and we can also learn the severity of infection. So next time that swab is poking around or you're worried what to believe, maybe it'll help to know the process behind the test. And remember, even in the darkest times, there are hidden opportunities to learn. Together, we can fight fear with knowledge.